Hi, I'm Katie Schofield. I'm a permanent makeup artist and trainer here in the UK. This video is going to be about choosing the best needle for the treatment you're going to perform and what to consider. Now, I'm getting a lot of people contacting me with questions and asking about courses. I have two amazing new courses coming up, including some freebies. And so to keep everyone's questions in the same place, I've started a new Facebook group so that we can connect and chat there and I can offer to help you. If you scroll in the description, there's a link to the group, Permanent Excellence. So let's talk about needles. I see it in forums all the time, people asking, what's the best needle? So I thought I'd use this visual to explain the differences. So let's talk about how we identify what the needle is to begin with. Well, all the information you need is on the packet of your needle. So starting off with this number here, 35, one RL. So 35.35 millimeters is the thickness of the needle. The one RL stands for a one round liner. One because there's one needle in the configuration and it's a round liner. So it's for lining things. Traditionally in body tattoos, this would be the outline. So this is a very fine needle because it's just one needle. Here we have a 35 3RL. So the needles are all still 0.35 millimeters, but there's three of them together and they're a round liner again. So if you imagine three needles tightly together so that they can make a line. So it's gonna cover more area than a 1RL because there's three needles, but it is still quite sharp and it's for lining. So this one here, we have a 25 3RS. So 0.25 so these needles are all thinner there are three of them like the one before but it's a round shader so it's round in its configuration so it's not straight it's round uh, there's three but these will be slightly apart so it's not quite as sharp so these are not for lining these in traditional body tattoos are for the shading part now if you've had a body tattoo you will have felt the difference between a liner and a shader so these ones are slightly further apart so that you get a more shaded result so it's a little less intense than a liner say so these can go up to all sorts of numbers so that just tells you the number of needles in the configuration how thick they are and the shape of it as well and what it's most suited for so here are some of the needle configurations you're likely to come across. You can see the 1RLs of various thicknesses, then the 3RL, and then you can see how the shader is slightly further apart. Then you have flat needles, which are in a row. And magnums are two rows of flat needles stacked on top of each other. Are you struggling with colour theory? In order to get amazing heel results, you need to understand how colours work in different skin types. I'm launching an amazing free colour theory taster course to help you. There's a link in the description, so sign up today because colour needn't be confusing. So I'm going to try and explain the needles by likening them to heels of shoes. Okay, so we've got a selection of shoes here. So you can see that this stiletto is incredibly thin, so I'd like us to imagine that that's a 1RL 0.2, so a very fine single round liner. And if we take this next stiletto up, this heel we can imagine is a 1RL 0.3. And here, this is still, you know, a bit of a stiletto, so I'm gonna, but it's a bit wider here, so we're gonna liken that to a 3RL. So it's a liner, but there's three of them, so it's a little bit more bulky there. And this one to a 3RS, so this is more spread out. I'm going all the way up with this trainer and that's going to be our magnum. So looking at this one, if you can see, we're going to take this mat as our skin. When we pass this over, it is going to make a mark on there quite easily. This one may be a little bit less. And as we go up to make a mark on them, because the pressure is spread out because we have a wider surface area, we're gonna actually have to push a little harder. Now, I'm not talking about putting on a lot of pressure, but to implant the pigment properly, as the needle configuration gets larger, you will have to push more. So a magnum, that's really spread out, and there's a lot of needles in there. 
you are going to have to put a lot of pressure to make a mark there. So this needle here would be ideal for hair strokes because if we go to a 0.3 for hair strokes it's probably going to be a little bit too thick. You're not going to get really really fine hair strokes. So either a 0.18 or a 0.2 for hair strokes. So you're really, really um, fine needles. But as I've just explained, it's far easier to do damage with these sharper needles. Because if you imagine standing on the grass, if you're with somebody wearing the trainers and you're wearing these shoes, who's gonna go through the grass first? It's gonna be this one, isn't it? So because that pressure is all concentrated on that really fine tip, it's quite easy to go too deep and make a lot of trauma with a 1RL. So with something like lips, you might want to line with a fine liner, 0.2 or even a 0.3, but fill in with a magnum. Because if you imagine, when we pass this over the skin, we're gonna fill in a lot more surface area far quicker than when we're passing this tiny needle over it. So what is it that we're trying to achieve? If you're trying to achieve really soft pixelated brows, it's gonna be done with a 1RL because these tiny dots are what's going to give us the pixels on the skin. And you're not going to get that with something like a 3RS. 3RL maybe, but these are gonna give us the soft pixelated results, but not everybody can stand it. So if you've got someone with very sensitive skin and their skin looks traumatized or it's really fine, dry and cracking, you're gonna to want to get the pigment in as quickly as possible. So move up maybe to a three or even a five RS. I've even done brows with magnums. The third point to consider is who is using the needle? Are you someone that's really light handed or are you heavy handed? If you're gonna jump around in these, you're gonna soon damage that skin. But if you're very, very light on your feet, light on your hands, then you'll be fine. So are you heavy handed? What kind of machine are you using? Does it have a longer stroke length? Is it a powerful machine or is it a soft machine? All these things will affect how the needle acts in the skin. So here you can see I've actually changed the surface that the shoes are sitting on. So if we imagine that the green layer was normal skin, this is somebody with really fine skin, really thin skin, maybe a more mature client, maybe someone really sensitive. So. If I pass that over, you can just see it's going to tear it. And what that would look like on a person is trauma. And if the skin is overworked, over traumatized, you're not going to get good healed results. They're going to scab, they're going to weep and take the pigment. You can even scar your clients. So what surface is it that you're working on? If we move up, you can see using our 3RS, that's making an imprint but it isn't tearing the skin. So when selecting your needles, ask yourself these questions. What treatment is it you're doing? What effect is it that you're trying to achieve? What kind of hand do you have? Are you heavy handed, soft handed? What's your machine like? And also what's your client's skin like? And always, if you're causing too much trauma, change your needle. I hope you can see from that visual representation that it's very wise to have a good knowledge of all needles so that you can be prepared for whatever treatment you're doing and whatever client walks through the door. To get used to the different needles, I'd advise trying them all on latex first and getting comfortable with them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. If you want more help on reducing your eyeliner mistakes with some nifty tips, watch this video here. If you want to see how to work on previous permanent brows, then click this video here. See you next time.